Alrighty guys, what's up? So today we're doing a, something a little bit different here. We're going to go over exactly how to color grade raw cinema DNG inside of Lightroom. And I know probably a lot of you, a lot of you are thinking like, why would you ever do that? And you know, DaVinci Resolve so much better and yada, yada, yada. Well, for some of us, you know, DaVinci Resolve is cool. I love DaVinci Resolve, but there's a lot of tools inside of DaVinci that aren't, they're not, it's different. Lightroom's got a lot of powerful tools and DaVinci Resolve has, also has a lot of more powerful tools, but those tools that are in DaVinci are not in, are not in Lightroom, and then some of the ones that are in Lightroom aren't in DaVinci Resolve. So what we're gonna try to do today is actually do a, a manageable workflow inside of Lightroom. So actually, let's get started. And this will only work for raw Cinema DNG files. So if you're shooting a different type of raw, I don't think it'll work unless Lightroom supported it, but um, for today, we're just going to be using um, raw Cinema DNG. So I've actually got our file right here. Um, it's just a, a Shogun file. Um, we pulled this from our Sony FS5, which we will try to have um, this file um, online for you to download and play with. So here's the actual clip. Looks, well, this is what it looks like when it's all color graded. Um, this is the actual color graded file. So we you know we haven't done anything to it. Just or actually, no, we. We've done a lot of stuff to this actually. And then what we'll do is we'll import the raw one. So let's go ahead and open up Adobe Lightroom. If it will open because the new Lightroom is buggy as hell. There we go. Let it load, let it load, let it load. All righty, cool. So this is actually a new thing we've done. Or this is actually a new catalog, but we'll just go ahead and import some new stuff real quick. We'll go over here to library. We'll go over here to import, and then we'll select our thing. It's n.2, so we're going to go to users, go to Kobe, and then go to desktop, and then we're going to go to, I have no idea what the hell that is. Um, that's something, something weird. Um, Shogun, and then we're going to select the very first um, frame. So you want to hit uncheck all, and then you want to select just the very first frame. Okay, that imported it. So now we'll do. We'll go develop, and I've already got presets done. So these are actually the presets we use on all our photos. And the goal of shooting raw is to make the um, the video look exactly like our photos do. So when we go shoot a wedding, the video looks the exact same, like color and all looks the exact same as the client's photos if we're shooting both photo and video, which a lot of times we are. So what we'll do is we'll go over into, where'd it go? Library, oh, I need to import that first. So import it. I'm a doofus sometimes, sometimes I forget. It's Monday and I forget things all the time. Um, cancel, what are we doing? develop okay there we go finally got it sometimes i even confuse myself on my room so what we'll do i like i want to use this preset right here um right here this is i for some reason i like it don't know why i like it and color grading is completely up to the color like the colorist so there's no right or wrong so for any haters out there that are hating on this grade go for it but i like this grade so we're just going to cool it off just a little bit we're going to uh, actually, exposure is probably right about where it needs to be. And then we'll go maybe just boost some contrast. Okay, cool. I like that grade right there. This is a, a color grading tutorial. This is just how to work with raw cinema DNG inside of um, Adobe Lightroom. So what we're going to do, this is really important that we do this. Once you color grade that first frame, make sure it's only the first frame. If it's the second frame, it will not work. It has to be the first frame. What you need to do is you need to right click. It doesn't matter. You can right click up here or down here. We're just going to click up here for right now. We're going to go to metadata and we're going to save metadata to file. And that's really important that we do that. So all, it, all it's doing is it's updating that file and it's gonna update across the board. So now what we need to go do is now we need to go to Adobe After Effects. Okay, and actually what you would do, um, and then this would be really easy if you just, when you go into the import module, you would import all the first frames of all the clips you like just shot and it takes two seconds. You just search, you know, zero, 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 whatever. Whatever the, you know, the first frame of every sequence is, inside of um, Lightroom and then um, that'll import all the first frames and you could edit all the first frames as a whole kind of like you would do for photos and then just as a whole you would right click save metadata to file and it'll save it across the board okay so just pretend we're doing a lot then what we'll do is we'll go into Adobe After Effects let it load give it a little bit of time dun, 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 dun. 
dun, 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 and it's still loading because I'm running a really far cable right now. Literally, I'm running a 30 foot HDMI cable from our office to have like this on set. And it's raining outside now. Cool. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll just X out of that. We'll go to File, we'll go to New Project. Damn it. New. Oh my God. Macy, I hate this mouse with a passion. New project. Tip, and also a quick tip. Get yourself a good mouse, because these wireless mouse, mice, whatever, they suck. They are just absolutely awful. Okay, whatever, made a new project. Cool. So now what we need to go do is we need to go to File, we need to go to Import, and we need to go to File. So now what we'll do is we'll go find our first frame right here, Image. And this is the very first frame that we did, the 000. So it's really important that we select that first frame. Import. And this is going to bring up the camera raw. Um, usually when you import raw footage into Adobe, it always brings up this. And if you already noticed, like, it's already been adjusted. These are all the same adjustments that we did in Lightroom. So we'll just simply hit OK. And then if, as, as you notice, it'll actually pop up as a DNG sequence. So it's just a sequence of DNGs. And it recognizes it as a, um, like a video file. So you'll just go over here, and then you would do this for every, you know, every single video file. So if I was going to go do this for all of my videos, I would just go to Import, and you could select multiple files, and you could literally just go, let's say I know where all this is at, 2016 Weddings, currently in progress, um, Shogun, Raw. So what you could do is you could literally go into every file. You could Image, select the first one. It'll import it, hit OK, it'll do it again, and you just go do this over and over and over. I know it's a little bit time-consuming, but it does work and this way you get the benefits of using Adobe Lightroom. So whatever, it makes the raw image you can sequence, you would just do this over and over and over. Now what you would do, you'd select all of your um, sequences real quick, and you would just drag them to this little composition icon, and then you would make sure when this uh, menu pops up that we select multiple compositions. We don't want to make one single one, we want to make multiple ones. Just hit OK. And what it does, it makes multiple compositions, so now what we need to go do is just go open up Adobe Media Encoder. And if you actually notice that these are video files, so if we click on it, actually we'll click on the first one we made. So here's our shoe. And if you notice, it's actually a video file. So it can actually play. Now, obviously, with this being a Cinema DNG sequence, it's really hard to play on a computer. Um, so what we need to do is compress it and convert it to a more usable file. So actually, this was already a, a workload we were doing a while ago. Let's go ahead and delete that real quick. So now what we'll do is we'll go over to our Adobe After Effects. We'll just kind of you know, minimize it, make it a little smaller. And then what we'll do is we'll simply just highlight all of these compositions. Make sure we don't grab the DNG sequences. We grab the actual compositions themselves, and we simply just drag them over. And now they're ready to be converted. So you just select your, you know, your um, preset of choice. Let the thing do its whatever. Command F. So we'll name it test or test or whatever the hell it is whatever cool save that and then save you know your whatever of choice you know for me um, for my editing purposes we're just going to use a bit rate of 50 um you know you can use whatever you want you can use higher if you want to you know cool and then just hit simply convert and this will take some time if you don't have a beefy machine i've got a pretty beefy beefy machine um actually we can look at my specs real quick because i know a lot of people ask me what do i edit on we'll go to display settings which I don't really care, display. Home, we'll go to about. System, about. So I'm just running a, this machine, this is one of our other, one of our machines in our uh, lineup. This one's got a 6900K, it's got a GTX 1080, and then we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, and then we've got, you know, a bunch of, in here we've got a bunch of drives, uh, a bunch of internal drives, um, and then we've got our networked attached storage device, which is going to load today, which is right here. And then this is where we keep all of our stuff. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Now these are converting, and they will make a file. So, you know, let's just pretend that that got all done working. So we'll just, you know, cancel that. So make sure we, you let yours, you know, go all the way through. And then what it'll do at the end, oops, that's the wrong folder. Just kidding. 
Oh, tip number two, if you ever have to like reboot your stuff and all the software that you use, you should keep a folder with all your essential software. So every time you redo your computer, because usually for us, um, our Windows machines, we clear them about every eight months. We'll do a complete new reinstall. Have all that like software that you can you know use on a day-to-day -day basis in one folder. That way you can just install them all in like 20 minutes. Anyway, but you'll go to your folder, wherever you saved them at, which you could be on your desktop, you know, your scratch drive, or scratch disk, no, don't do it on your scratch disk, your server, whatever, and it'll make a file, and it should play just fine. So ours plays just fine. Now what I'll do is I'll send this colored image to the editor. I know we're doing things a little bit out of order. We're coloring first, um, but this is the way how we can, for one, use Cinema DNG on a normal computer. We can color it really well, and we can have a usable file for our clients to view and for us to view and just just a good day. So that's it for this episode. If you like this video, be sure to give us a like. And if you just hated it, well, let me know why you hate it or why you don't like Cinema DNG. Um, we like Cinema DNG even though it is a lot of space, but we do this process right when we um, ingest the footage. So we actually don't save these raw files. Right when we ingest these, we save them on our server and immediately color grade them. Once they're all color graded and rendered out and converted, we simply delete the raw files and then you know once they're deleted, they're deleted. But we make sure we do make a original like file. So one with a color grade and one without a color grade. So just in case you know the color graded version doesn't work, we have that raw, raw file from the actual recorder to work with. So um, that's it for this episode. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you want to know anything else about raw cinema DNG, leave a comment below and we will make an episode about that. So thank you. I'm gonna get back to work, hopefully.